Hello everyone, welcome back. In this part, we're going to talk about our window object in JavaScript. As you know, in the last part, we have covered our document object, which by using that, we can access to the HTML page that we have linked our JavaScript into that. But another thing that we can have access to in JavaScript and do some things using that is our browser window. So first, let's add our JavaScript into our HTML page. And now let's open our index.html using our live server. Okay, now as you see, we have our page right here. And if we have some test text right here, you can see it appears in our page. Here, let's say we have simple div with the ID of div right here. And here in JavaScript, let's select that div. So we use document that get element by ID and we pass the ID of div right here. And let's make the inner HTML some tests right here and do our work. So the first thing that we want to have is our window height. So what we can do is we can use our window object right here and here we can use our inner height property inside of that. So let's actually, we save our element into our tag variable right here and get rid of this inner HTML property. And here, let's say we want to make our tag that inner HTML to our windows inner height. And as you'll see, we got this result right here in pixel, but as all of you expect, our height is not 330 pixels. And this is because of I have zoomed in my web page. If I reset this and refresh the page, you can see that we got the result of 992. And because all of my screen is 1080p, this is going to grab only the white space and not this part. But if I have this in full screen mode, and refresh my page, you can see that we got the result of 1080 right here. And that is the height of our window. And as same as this inner height, we got another thing of inner width. And what that is, is basically the width that our window takes. So if this is full screen, you can see that we got 1920 right here, because this is 1920 pixels in the width. And if we resize the page and refresh, you can see that we got different numbers right here. And by using this inner width and inner height, we can define our CSS properties and values too, as our windows height and width, which we have that actually in our CSS, which is as same as view width and view height. After this one, we have another thing that we can show to you, which that is our screen property inside of our window object. But as you see right here, our screen property is object itself. So we have some things inside of our screen object. The first one is going to be our width, of course, which if we use right here, you can see that this result appears. And this is based on the all screen that we have and not the window of our browser. So if I refresh, if I change this, nothing happens because this is going to grab the screen's detail and return that to us. And we can use this screen property alone without this window object. And this is going to work as same as before. After this width, of course, we're going to have our height, which is going to be 1080 in my situation and my screen, but this might be different based on your own monitor and display. Another thing that we have right here is going to be our avail height and avail width. And what these are is going to be our screen minus the things that we have in our screen as a default things that take some space from our screen. But if I refresh the page, you can see that we got this 10 ID right here because I have my taskbar hidden when I don't use that. So I got the full screen 
pixels. But if we make our taskbar to stay right here, so let's come to our settings and make this up. And by using this, if I refresh this, you can see that we got 30 pixels less than before and that is because of our taskbar which is going to take 30 pixel from our screen and as same as this if i change the size of my taskbar right here and refresh you can see we got some different and as same as this avail height we got another thing of avail width and that is just as same as the height one. So let's say I move my taskbar to this left side right here. If I refresh, you can see that we got this result, which is going to be pixels from just here to here. And the all screen width, which is 1920 minus this taskbar part. So let's make this as it was before. And now let's fix these one too. And let's talk about other two things that we have inside of our screen, which they are going to be color depth and pixel depth. So here, if we use this color depth right here, you can see that we got this number. And this is the number of bits that's used to display a color in this screen. And just as same as this, we got our pixel depth which is going to return us the pixel depth for us, which is going to be 24 again in my case. But all of this screen things that we saw right here might be different in your system and your code. And if we use these things inside of our websites, web apps or other things, that is going to react based on every person's screen and with that details. So we can have very flexible things coding with this item. After this, we got another object as a property inside of our window, which itself contains some other properties that we can have. And that is going to be our location property. And this location is basically going to run this .href as default when we running our code. So this is going to grab the link that we have inside of our browser's URL part and return that to us. After this, we're going to have our host name that if we use, you can see that we got the host name part of the URL that we got. So we can use some things with that and pay attention. This is not going to be IP in all cases. It's going to be mostly the domain's host name where you upload your application or website. After this, we are going to have our path name, which is going to grab us whatever we have after this slash right here. So in this case, it's going to be index.html or if we render this in other HTML files or routes, it's going to show that and grab that for us. After this one, we're going to have our protocol, which is going to say us what protocol has been used in this request and window. For example, here, because this is on my local host, as you see, this is HTTP, or if you have SSL certification, which is very useful and you need that if you want to publish website or web apps, you need to get that HTTPS from this property. And as same as our screen one, we can use again this one without window two. So our location dot protocol is going to grab the same things that we got from seconds ago. Another thing that we can have is this assign method that we got inside of our location, which is going to make what we put right here into this part of our browser. And we need to pass that in string. So let's say here we want to pass HTTPS and Google.com. And as you saw, when we enter our local host, this is going to be run and redirect us into this Google.com. So let's get rid of this line right here and make this simple test text right here and come to our local host right here. As you see, we got our test. The next thing that we're going to cover is how we can access these two buttons of our browser. Because you know that if we click this, we go back and this is going to be 
forward for us. And for using these two items, we need to use our window.history object, which itself has two property inside of it, which they are going to be back and forward. If we use this back, it's as same as we use this one. And if we use this forward, it's going to be this one. So first, let's say here, we want to go to our google.com right here. So after this, we have this page of us. So if we press this, it's going to come to this google.com. And again, if we press, we come here. So if we use this dot forward right here, which is going to be method, you can see that we come forward. And if I again go back to that website, again, it's going to send me to this google.com. So if I click, you can see as same as I click, it's going to redirect me to this google.com and I cannot see it. And as same as this, we have this back method, which if we use this, we're going to use this button right here. And this again, we can be used without this window object at the first. After this, we're going to talk about our window.navigator object. And let's come to our local host, which we got this. And inside of this navigator, again, we're going to have some other properties, which is going to grab some details about the browser for us. For example, we have our cookie enabled, which is going to return if cookies are enabled in the window or not. So let's say if we have this cookie enabled right here, you can see that we got this true. And another thing that we can have here, for example, is our language, which is going to return the language of our window for us, which as you see, it is English of the US for me, but it can be different in any user again or another thing that we can have is this align which is going to say us if we have active connection to the internet or not this is going to return that result for us and this is actually this navigator things that we have which again if we remove this window you can see again it's going to be work after this one we're going to have another property that we have which we have used a lot especially in this course is going to be our window.alert method, which is going to alert something for us as you see right here. And of course, as you know, we can use this alert alone and not with that window object. And this is going to be work. And by using this, you can see that we got legal window here, which is going to show some message for us and by this alert you can see that we got only this ok button right here but another thing that we can have here is this confirm method which if we use this you can see that we got two result of cancel and ok that we can select and pay attention this is going to return something for us for example let's say here we want to show what this has returned for us so if i press ok right here you can see that we got this true and if i click this cancel you can see that we got this false so you can use this thing and this confirm to ask yes no questions with your javascript another thing that we have right here is going to be our prompt which is going to be some input that we type something right here. And by pressing this OK, it's going to return the result that we have input for us. So if I use this, you can see that we got this result. And if I again type the test word right here and press the OK, you can see that we got test. And this method is going to return the test word that we have typed into this input for us and we're going to print that using this inner html which is going to make that text inside of our div after this in our javascript window and browser bomb we got our timing functions too which we have covered them which they are this set interval and this set timeouts and as you know these both going to receive some callback functions here in the first place and time in the milliseconds that need to run so again this one 
is going to have callback function right here and this millisecond. This function is going to run every 2000 milliseconds or every two seconds. And this one is going to wait two seconds and run the code only once. But beside of this, we have two other methods of clear interval and clear timeout just like this, which for example, clear interval is going to use the variable return from the set interval and clear timeout stops the execution of the function specified in set timeout. The last thing that we're going to talk about in this part is going to be our cookie. Cookies are data that we're going to store them in text file in the computer. So when, for example, some user visit the page and close the connection, and the next time it comes and check, cookies are still in person's computer if he had let the website and accept that we use the cookies on that person's computer, those cookies are still going to be there and we can save something that we identify who this is and where he has left, for example. And for creating cookie, we use our document.cookie property right here, which here we can define that to the text that we want. For example, here we want to say A to be 16. This string is going to be saved in a cookie which is going to be some kind of little variable inside of person's computer so whenever user for example close the connection and again visit the website we can have that cookie in here so if we come to this inspect this application and cookies right here you can see we got this age to be 16 right here and pay attention that these cookies can have expiration time so let's say we want to save this only for two weeks one week we can do that by passing the time that we want right here and that is going to be the semicolon and then this expires keyword which is going to be equal to actually i misspelled this and here we need to give the time that we want our cookie to to delete itself and you need to use date format right here for example let's say we want our cookie to expire in 19th of the may in 2024 and we can give some time for this too for example we want 10 and we need to pass the seconds too and at the end we put this utc so this cookie is going to be in our document cookie property until this date that we entered right here but how we are going to read these cookies so if we want to read them we can use simply our document dot cookie and if we have our div selecting again document dot get element by id and we have id of div right here and we make the inner html into this cookie you can see that we got this cookie right here and if i refresh the page again i have this right here and if I have another tab open and reopen our website, again, this can access to the cookie. And as same as this, we can have actually multiple cookies too. So let's say we want to have another one to be named to Tom. And if I refresh, you can see that we got this name Tom. And again, if we delete this and refresh, you can see we got this one too. And for example, if you want to delete one of the cookies, what you need to do is only make the expire date to the past date. And by using this, the cookie is going to be deleted automatically. So here, let's say we want to have our document that cookie property, and we want to use this age one right here to be again 16. But at the end, we use this expire and we make this, for example, 2020. Please do like and subscribe to catch next videos.